Okay, welcome to part two on the simplex method. Uh, so far what we've done is we've we've started the table. Now we have an objective function up here. It's the maximize 1.5x and 2y. Uh, we have some constraints and then we've talked about the slack variables and down here is our table. Now before we go on I just want to mention that this is called a standard max problem. You're maximizing an objective function you have all non-negative variables, so x and y both have to be greater than or equal to zero, and your inequalities are have uh, inequalities have less than or equal to signs. That makes this a standard max problem. So let's go ahead and start solving this problem. So here is our table right here. Now we're going to go over the steps on how to find your pivot element, because what it's it's pretty much like row reducing except we're not going to do like a diagonal of ones like we did before um, but I still do need to find a pivot element and I do need to do my row operations so how do I find out which one is going to be my pivot element well, let's go let's start with step one step one is to find the pivot column okay and the way we find the pivot column you're going to locate the most negative entry in the last row, excluding the constant column. So this, you do not use this number here. So you go through the, scan through the last row, find any negative numbers. So we have one here, and we have one here. So I got to figure out which one is the most negative. So basically the most negative means if I were to get rid of the negative signs, which one would be the biggest number? And if we did that, this one would be it. So negative 2 is our largest negative number and so that is our pivot column that's how we find the pivot column so once I find the pivot column I gotta find the pivot row now just a, a quick note your pivot element will never be in the last row which means my pivot element is either going to be the 6 or it's going to be the 2 and that, let's figure out how to do that oh by the way sorry if you have like say both of these were negative 2's and if they were both the largest negative number, then you just pick whichever one you want. Okay, so if they are both negative twos, you just pick whichever column you want as your pivot column. But fortunately, negative two is the largest negative, and this is our pivot column. So step two, we are going to find the pivot row, and here's how we do it. Now the step may seem a little weird, um, but when we actually do it, it will be pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to divide each constant so these are my constants right up here, by its corresponding positive entry from the pivot column. Uh, it has to be positive, which means like you can't do 1,200 divided by if this was like a negative 6. You couldn't do that. Okay, if it's negative, it doesn't count. So we got 1,200 divided by 6, which is 200. And then we have 600 divided by its corresponding positive, right? This is positive. Uh, entry which is 2 and that gives us 300. So how do I know which one to pick? The pivot row is going to be the row with the smallest ratio. So 200 is the smallest ratio which means 6 is going to be my pivot element. And now that this is my pivot element I need to turn it into a 1 and then do some row operations. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so how do I turn that into a 1? Well, what you would do is you would divide the row, so divide row 1 by a 6th. Or, I'm sorry, multiply row 1 by a 6th. So do 3 divided by 6, which is 1 half. Then we got 6 divided by 6, which is 1. This will be 1 sixth, 0, 0, and 200. All right. Now we're not changing anything to rows 2 and 3, so that's going to be a 3, 2, 0, 1, 0, 600. And then negative 1.5, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, and 0. All right, so now that this is, and again, my pivot element, this is a 1, I need to turn these into zeros. So how do we do that? Well, first let's write in the row we're not changing, so 1 half. 1, 1 sixth, 0, 0, 200. And this would be, okay, so now it's, we're going to change row 2. Now, how do I get rid of a uh, 2? 
well, I need to have a negative 2. So we're going to subtract 2 times your pivot row. Now, what you could do is you can do 3 minus 2 times a half, okay, and do them individually. But I like doing them on a graphing calculator. So let's take out a graphing calculator. I have one set up right now. And I'll show you how I would do it. So I'm going to actually type in the rows just like I've written it down here. So we have row 2. So what you're going to do is you're going to use a brace and then type in row 2. So that's 3, 2, 0, 1, 0, 600. And then you're going to close the brace. So that's row 1, or I'm sorry, row 2, minus 2 times, and then you type in row 1, exactly the way it's written right here. And so that's going to be 1 half, comma 1, 1 sixth, 0, 0, 200. Close the brace and press enter. Now if you get decimals, it's fine. You just click on math, convert to fractions, and there we go. So there is our new row that I'm going to put into our matrix. Next, we're going to focus on the third row. So now this is a negative 2. I needed to turn it into a 0. So I'm going to take row 3, and I'm going to add 2 times row 1. So let's take out our calculator again. And we're going to do row 3. Now row 3, that's a negative. 1.5, oops, 1.5, comma, negative 2, comma, 0, 0, 1, comma, 0, and the brace. And then we're going to add 2 times row 1. So that's 1 half, 1, 1 sixth, 0, 0, 200. And then let's close the brace. Okay, so, uh, oh, let's convert this into fractions. Okay, so there we go. So let me put this row in for row three. Okay, so next, scroll up here. Next, what we're going to do is uh, scan through the bottom row. Notice that we have a negative one half here. It is actually the only negative. Uh, so this is automatically our pivot column. We need to figure out what our pivot row is. So off to the right, what you're going to do is you're going to take your constant and divide it by the corresponding element from the pivot column, which is 1 half. So 200 divided by a half is 400. And then here we're going to do 200 divided by its corresponding element, which is the 2. And you get 100. And you pick the smallest ratio, which is the 100. So this is my pivot element. So now I need to turn that into a 1. And what I'm going to do is then divide this entire row by 2. And there we go. So I've now divided this entire row, row 2, by 2. Uh, we're not changing anything to the other rows, so let me just write those in. So we've got 1 half, and so on. And so now this is our current simplex table. Uh, we only got, oops, sorry about that. We only got one more step left. So again, this is our pivot element. So let's take out our new table. Now I need this to turn into a zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row one. And I'm going to subtract off one half because it's a positive half. I need a negative one half, row two. All right, so let's take out the calculator again. And let's type all that in. So type it in exactly the way it's written. So use braces for each row. So type in row 1, which is 1 half, comma 1, 1 sixth, 0, 0, 200. Close the brace. And then you subtract 1 half. So you can use parentheses like 1 half times. And then row 2. Now row 2, that's 1, 0, negative one sixth comma one half comma zero comma hundred all right let's close the brace press enter uh, it's already in um, decimals nice decimals but I'm going to turn them into fractions it's just more of a preference and there you go so let me 
put that into our table here. So that's going to be 0. Let's change the color. So we have 0, 1, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth, 0, and my constant will be 150. Now we're not changing anything to row 2, so let me just write that row back in. And then finally, row 3. So row 3, now it's a negative 1 half, so what I need is a positive 1 half times my pivot row. So again, let's take out the graphing calculator and type this in. So we're going to take row 3, which is right there, and then we're going to add one half times and then row two which is our pivot row press enter and there we go so let me convert these two fractions and so we're going to get oops where'd it go okay so we're going to get zero zero one fourth one fourth one and then our constant is 450. Okay, so now you've scanned through the last row. Notice there are no more negatives. And so now we get to just read off the answer. So this is how we read the answer. We have two kinds of columns here. We have what we call unit columns, unit columns, which we also name basic columns. Okay, so that's one type, and then we have non-basic. Now, unit columns are columns that have a 1 and then zeros everywhere else in that column. So, for example, this is a unit column, it's also, so it's a basic column. This is also a basic column. All right. So there we go. Now, what are my non-basic columns? Well, my non-basic columns are going to be the U's and the V's. Now, it doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes the X or sometimes the Y, that could also be non-basic. But this is how you read off your answer. Much like you did when row reducing, um, you would look for where you have that 1, which is right here. And then your answer is going to be this over to that constant. So now my 1 for my X, so 1X, equals, and then it's going to equal the constant 100. And then we have our y, uh, which is right here, and that's going to equal 150. Now what do we do to the non-basic? Now non-basic columns are based, they're just the junk columns. All right, There's nothing special about these. they got a bunch of weird numbers in them. When you have non-basic columns, they automatically equal 0. So you have u, which is non-basic, which will equal 0, and v will equal 0. And again, just to note, this x, this could be a junk column. Okay, It is very possible for that to be a junk column, which means it would automatically equal 0. But this is our answer. Now, if you watched part 1 of this video or a series, we know that this was the answer. And what is your max? It's right there. So here's our max. This is where the max occurs, and that um, matches what we found in the first video, and that is how you do the simplex method.